my mom. Come on. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> happy birthday. start today because I was like preoccupying myself with things. It's Friday and it's also my dad's birthday so happy birthday to my dad. I'm just gonna do some Bible study right now. I uh, just wanted to kind of get on here and oh, the dog. I don't know. <laughs> just kind of I'll go over what I've been learning from my Bible study. How about that? So I've been reading pretty much the book of Matthew. I'm on chapter 16 right now. This year, I wanted to read the Bible more, you know, grow and have a deeper connection and relationship with Jesus. And by that, you know, it takes reading the word, prayer, and just like talking and just including him into my day. The first step, obviously, is to read the word because I get to learn more and more about him and what he's about and what he wants for me in my life so i started like reading and kind of getting more into the bible i want to say 2014 so i've gone to church my whole life but never really knew how to read and study the bible and it wasn't until about 2014 when we um opened up our sister church being a believer since i was younger until about 2014 when i was was i already 30 then i don't know i was like late 20s early early 30s but to think from me being young, younger to 20 and never having that intimate relationship with him you know i've have i've had encounters with you know the lord but i've never grown to know him the way that I do after 2014 because I felt like I was being taught in a way that was teachable that I could understand I could grasp and at the same time I could also copy I found ways and methods of how to study and really oh my hair sorry and like really dive into the Bible, you know, really read it for myself and understand it for myself without having to rely on like pastors or leaders to interpret. I mean, granted there are times and there were times when I didn't understand something, they were there to help. So that's always great. But now, you know, I can read it myself and be patient with like what that interpretation means or what that passage might mean. So um, anyway, as I was saying, this year, you know, I wanted to push myself and challenge myself a little bit more, take one more step and not just like reading the Bible like I did before and taking notes. Now I'm actually doing more than just taking notes. I'm allowing the spirit to lead and guide me into what to write. But I'm also allowing myself to express how I'm feeling in that moment or what I feel about that passage. Um, I've been in Matthew and hitting, you know, the 15th chapter. I've obviously learned so much every time that I hear something being pulled out from Matthew to be used. You know, you hear it, but until you really study it is when you grasp you know that knowledge for yourself i'm not saying that when the pastors preach or when our leaders preach that it doesn't give me knowledge but it allows me to be more intimate with jesus when i'm i'm reading it for myself and studying it for myself so every aspect of hearing the word is a different knowledge and wisdom that you gain so i'm not saying or discrediting um you know hearing it from being preached to me learning it so um, both are great ways to learn and grow more intimate with you know the Lord. I'm not gonna go over like for what I've been learning because that's that it's a lot you know. And if that's something that you guys want to do with me, I'm more than happy to share that. But um, I'll just kind of go over the basics of like what I'm doing, 
how I'm actually doing this. So I always have of course like a pen with me and every day I'm just picking a different color. <laughs> and I have my highlighters. They're pretty much the same colors, but they're just two kinds. Um, I have these that are the non-toxic um, highlighters that aren't liquid and ink type, but they're more like a gel consistency. I bought these at like, I think it was maybe Mar Marshalls or Burlington. But I really like them. They feel like a gel or I don't know. Oh, kind of like a crayon. Yeah, there you go. A crayon. Because when you touch it, it doesn't bleed onto your hands or anything like that. And it's pretty see-through. Um, and then, of course, just your typical highlighters. So I have three colors in these. And I pull them all out, out because I'm using them all depending on how I'm writing. So I'll just switch it up. But let me show you an example of like maybe what I do and how I go about it. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna choose this page because it has underlines and kind of different colored highlights. And what I did was, if you can see, and I, and I wanted to do this too because, you know, for the longest time here, I'll show you. This is the first chapter that actually has highlights and underlines and I just never had those tools already and equipped so whenever something struck to me I don't know I never underlined it like I randomly would do but if you can tell you know like I mean I read it but I just haven't marked it as much like for example this like yeah when I had a highlighter handy then I went and highlighted but no I wanted my book to look more like this like I was using it you know not to prove to anybody but for myself to show that I'm learning if you can see Basically, this is just my preference. The yellow is always when Jesus is talking, speaking in parables or when he's saying something. And then the pink to me was almost like, I just associated pink with like a female character. And then the orange is more so if it was a male speaking or maybe if God was saying something or if the author was just kind of writing, you know? And then I saw that it stood out. And then whenever you can see the underline, if it's an underline without anything, then for me, it just meant that either it wasn't anything positive, but it was something negative that I wanted to underline, to highlight, to show to me that that's something that I need to stay away from or be aware of. Um, also, if I underline something, it also meant that it wasn't a uh, like a complete verse. So let's just say, for example, this one right here, it is it is verse 16, but the verse is really long. So if you can see, oh yeah, you can see. The verse is pretty long, but I only wanted to highlight this right here, which it says, he drove out the spirits with a word. That in the verse itself struck me and whatever the way that the spirit was trying to strike, strike me. <laughs> if I highlighted this and I felt like this point, this stood out to me, then I underlined this, which it says, for I myself am a man under authority. That I underline to remind myself that I, being a man, being human flesh, am under an authority and I need, I need to remember that. For the most part, you know, yellow was always when Jesus was speaking. Pink was always associated with like a female voice or a female character, regardless if they spoke or not or if it just talked about that female person, um, that female. So, for example, in the pink here it says, um, Just then a woman who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years came up behind him and touched the edge of his cloak. She said to herself, if I only touch his cloak, I will be healed. Yeah, so it, you know, it has to do with the female, the, the woman who had the issue of blood. So that's how I go about it. And then as I'm reading it, for example, this page, you know, it might have more underlines than others. And like I said, it's, it's all just what I feel kind of resonates or kind of breaks my attention. Um, but yeah, so that's my method of how I Bible study. You know, so in the future, if I go back and I look at what I've highlighted, then I can see, you know, at that time, what stuck out to me. Okay, I haven't done my morning devotion yet, even though it's almost 10 o'clock, but I'm going to do it because I don't want to break that habit. Once I start breaking the habit, then I'm going to get into the habit of not doing it at all. So, you know, to keep a habit, you have to keep doing it. And to break a habit, you have to keep breaking that habit you know all 
All right, share with me some of your tips and your tricks of how you do Bible study. And we can go from there. All right, talk to you guys later. Bye. Whatever happens is gonna happen. I can't. Okay, so I want to film a quick unboxing of the Poshmark items that I purchased just recently. They finally came in today. I just went downstairs and I grabbed the Poshmark box. So exciting. I purchased three items. The seller, her name is Lynn's Closet. So this is my first Poshmark order. I can do a try on haul too. I know, I have to stop shopping. Look how nicely packaged. Thank you. Be sure to follow us and receive an additional 15% off your next purchase. I hope you guys can see her card. It's so cute. Aww. Everything's like perfectly wrapped. It's so cute. And it lo definitely looks like the description. So I'm so excited. Oh, I'm gonna first go from the top to bottom, okay? Look how cute it is. No, thank you. <laughs> okay. So this first item is a skirt. Oh, it's so pretty. It was a size small. Oh my god, it's so pretty. Look at that. How flowy and pretty it is. Um, it's probably not gonna fit, but I'm gonna make it fit somehow. This is the brand. Oh, it's way too small. I can make it fit. No. <laughs> It's okay. If it doesn't fit me, I can um, save it for Malia or... Alright, just gotta lose like 10 pounds and I'll be able to fit it. Next item. Look at the pattern. You can already tell it's like going to be so cute. Oh my gosh, and it's a small too. It's a v-neck. I figured this would fit me. Like I feel like usually with this type of material and this style, there's always, you know, giveaway. Like I feel like... I didn't need to order a medium. Usually I'm like a small medium and it's pretty long too. So you could wear it as a dress. Let me see if um, I can try it on. Oh my gosh, it's so cute, you guys. I mean, my boobs might be a little bit too big, but no, I mean, I think it fits perfectly. I might just need to wear a um, strapless bra. So yes, I could wear this with like biker shorts. That's really cute. All right, I'm just gonna wear this. Okay, um, and then the last item, color green romper. And this was a size medium, so I feel like this will fit me. Well, it has to. And look at even the tag is so cute, like the handwriting. Okay, it's like a cute overall outfit. It's open in the back, has a tie in the back. Okay, I'm gonna try this on. Okay, I'm back. And unfortunately, the green romper did not fit me. <laughs> um, it's okay. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and give it to Malia, but I still thought it was really cute. And I got it for a really good deal. I bundled it. So she was offering three items that was priced at 30 or lower, and she would um, give it to me for 35. Anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed that little, um, my first time uh, purchasing from Poshmark. I will link down below the seller's information. And if you guys want to check out her store, she has a lot of cute stuff and um, she was really nice and very fast too. So once I ordered it, like the next day she had already shipped, she had already shipped everything. So, all right. I will talk to you guys again soon. Have a great day. Bye. Happy, Happy birthday, dear Logan. Logan. Happy birthday to you! Yeah! Wait, hey, he has to blow it first. Right, and then you clap. No, you clap. Yay! Oh, yeah. Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday to you! To Dad! Happy birthday to you! Go come blow it. Go blow it, Liam. Want to go blow? Yeah. Oh, happy. Yeah. 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 go blow it with her so she can see. Look, look, Liam. Oh, oh, oh. Hey. Happy you.